Hey YouTube, so today's video will be a physical deck profile. I'll be going through the card by card using my actual cards. Uh, but before we do that, I know when many people are pulling up deck profiles, they just want to quickly see a list, uh, just so they can at a glance see all the changes or just have something to screenshot or refer to. So before we go through the card by card with the physical cards, I'll be showing my deck list on DB. So here it is. Download link is in the description. If that's what you're here for, great, thanks for coming, feel free to leave, but please leave a like and maybe subscribe before you do. Uh, for anyone else, I want to just quickly show my deck list that I was using, that I used on uh, Sunday, February 5th, at the most recent um, regional that I participated in. So here it is, I took it to top 4. Yes, it is pre-ban list, so you might be wondering why I'm including it in a post-ban list deck profile. Uh, but what's crucial about it is you you may know you may notice the date that I said February fifth. Uh, this was pre ban list, but post grand creators. So I have it teched to a meta that has grand creators in it. So the text will be the text will mostly carry over uh, for this new format now, and I think it I think it's just sort of a good starting point. So basically, the cards that came out are these two, obviously. Uh, this one, obviously, it's a break with no way to summon it without this guy. Uh, then, then for the rest that I took out, are they're a bit less obvious. You have to understand some of the theory behind the deck list uh, to understand the decisions I made. So basically, in the previous format, at least two times that I know of, a deck that was more of a tri-brigade list featuring some birds, uh, so kind of what I'm going for here with the revolts and stuff, uh, at least two times in the previous format did a deck like that top a big tournament. So I know, I believe it was the uh, CCS and also the most recent European Remote Dual YCS. And actually at the Remote Dual YCS, a deck like that got second place. So there are there are some big results behind this deck pre-ban list. So even, even, though, even though these cards were available, good players were seeing success at major tournaments with a deck that cut down on birds and up the tri brigade count. So I figured now that these cards are banned, that was the direction to go. So after cutting those, I cut the Atopic package. Uh, if you're if we're moving towards more of a tri brigade focus with more link monsters, there just is not enough space to run both these two and the additional rank one that you would have to to accommodate them. Last thing I cut was win, because this is one of the the most easily cuttable cards in the extra deck, and also it's going to be a lot less relevant now, probably a lot less bird mirrors, um, Sword Soul took a hit, and there's just new contenders, so th this, this card won't put in as much work as it did last format. So then from there, we cut the excess birds. So basically we, we tried to cut down on... Uh, we, we took every bird down to one copy except for green and bird call. And then, since we're less, running less birds, we cut the wear off bows. So now that we got that theory out of the way, let's get into the card by card. So, I did actually take this deck to a Winnebox tournament on. Um, Today, Monday, well, today as I'm recording this, um, Sunday, February 6th, and I, I got top four, I lost in the finals to the guy who won it all, and um, actually it was uh, Mr. Hamza Aether of uh, Mr. Aether Gaming himself, uh, shout out to that channel, if, if you somehow don't know it but are watching me, uh, make sure to check it out. Point being, I, I have run this list now in an event, and I can... I stand behind it. I, I think most of my decisions are correct. Like the only thing, um, the only thing that maybe should be tweaked is the tech choices, and that's mostly just because the format has not settled yet. But I would be perfectly happy to run this exact list again at an event or a regional if I had to tomorrow. So let's get into it. First, as this is a tri brigade deck now, more than more so than a Lurlust deck, we'll start with the tri brigade engine. We got the five fractal, triple nerval, and now triple kit. We need the two additional copies because we are playing tri brigade, not Lyrilusk. 
Uh, two Karas might cut this to one, but I just felt that two was a comfortable place to start. And the one revolt. You don't need more. You don't want to draw it. Uh, one should be enough. If you if you haven't ended the game already and find yourself wanting to resolve another, I, I think you're doing something wrong. This deck can close the game super easy, and you should be trying to do that. And then the birds. Triple bird call. Triple warbler. And now here's where my list differs from the lists that I showed you on screen. One Cobalt Sparrow. I don't see how more than one of this is necessary. One Wagtail, one Swallow, and one Canary. These three guards are not run in the list that I've looked at, that we're going for uh, what I'm going for here with the Tri Brigade, um, <coughs> with a greater Tri Brigade focus. But I think they're absolutely necessary. Taking up just three spots in the deck, they give you so much flexibility and such a crazy follow-up. By flexibility, I mean there are boards where you can put down a 4-material Ensemble backed up by an Appaloosa and a Revolt. Um, and by, by follow-up, as you've seen if you watched my previous combo video, um, you, can do, you can put down a 5-interruption board, have two tribe effects for follow-up, and also have a and also have the Canary to make you a 4-material Zeus, which is just phenomenal. I, I think these three cards are absolutely worth running. Uh, then we still have the one for one. Uh, this card still summons Nerval, still summons birds. Uh, it's a consistency card. I think it's definitely worth running. I just wanted to speak more about the uh, one of copies of each of these. Now that you're running revolts, it's fine to banish them, uh, and then you can just put them back in the graveyard with revolt. I don't see why more than one of these is necessary whatsoever. And then sticking to a small bird count gives us space for 15 tech cards. First of all, the mandatory DD Crow. You have to run it, searchable, banishes uh, DPE, banishes Celestial, what more can you ask? Triple Imprim. Uh, now before I get any deeper into the tech cards, I just wanted to talk about sort of what I was thinking when I was choosing them. First and foremost, the deck that's on everybody's mind right now is Adventurer Phantom Knights. And Honestly, that deck doesn't do anything threatening at all, except for the Scythelock. So my thinking here is, if I just tailor my tech cards to let me, uh, to let me pr break through the Scythelock as often as possible, I should be beating that deck. But at the same time, I don't want my techs to be completely useless into things like Swordsaw. So yeah, with that in mind, uh, I'll go further into it. Triple Imperm helps me with the Scythelock because you can Imperm Verte. And it's also good against Swordsoul. Then Triple Chalice. Uh, just one of my favorite cards for breaking boards. I ran it in all my lists last format. Generally, you want to chain this to the DP. Also really good for cracking uh, Swordsoul boards. Double Ash. This is more of just a catch-all card. Doesn't do, uh, doesn't do too much versus Phantom Knights, but is really good into Swordsoul. What this card does do against uh, Phantom Knights, though, is what makes them so scary now is that they can protect their Scythelock. With the Adventure Engine, they get into an Omni Negate. That makes it so that a single Imperm, a single Chalice, a single Crow can't stop the Scythelock. You need two cards. Or you need to prevent them from getting into their Adventure Engine. So Ash does that. Ogre also does that. Ogre on the Fateful Adventurer, they don't get into their engine. The other thing uh, that Ogre does is you can draw it as your sixth card, and Ogre the you can draw it as their sixth card, and Ogre to effectively negate the Griffin Rider, because Griffin Rider requires uh, itself to be shuffled into the deck in order to resolve the negate. So since Ogre destroys it, doesn't get the shuffle, doesn't get the negate. So basically, Ogre plus any of the other cards that I mentioned for either negating DP or banishing Scythe. You'll chain those, they'll try to negate it with the Griffin Rider, and you'll chain Ogre to effectively negate the Griffin Rider. Next up, we got the Double Droll. Double Droll is for the Fateful Adventure engine. If they start out with... If they start out with the Enchantress to add the Rite of Aramisa, 
you just lock them out of all searches for the turn. They can't even they can't even search the Griffin Rider, can't search the equip spell. So basically they they've accomplished nothing with that engine. It's only at two of because it's awful versus Sword Soul. If Sword Soul wasn't a deck, I'd be maining three of these. And then the double cosmic. This card uh, is for banishing scythe, first and foremost. So just like I was talking about with the other cards, they activate DP, you chain cosmic, target scythe, they try to negate it, and hopefully you have a card that can answer the Griffin Rider. The other thing is there isn't really a matchup where this is dead uh, now. Whereas last format you had to worry about birds. Um, this format I think the best way to play birds is like this, where with revolt, so Cosmic can hit the revolt. Um, the other the other good decks, Phantom Knight with Scythe, you can hit the Fog Blade. Going first, you can hit the Fateful Adventurer. Prank Kids is going to be a big threat now. This card is as good as ever against them, hitting the Pandemonium on standby, so they can't activate it. The other thing is Skill Drains at three now. So like in um, like in Phantom Knights that I or like in Prank Kids that I just mentioned. This gives you an answer to Skill Drain, so you don't just auto-lose the one card. And also, stuff like Eldritch could be popping up now. <coughs> now that Skill Drain's at 3, and they can use the Fateful... Uh, they can use the Adventurer Engine as well, so Cosmic's very good there. Other decks in the meta that this is good against? R Virtual World with the uh, Chuche, and the Invoke deck with their Shadal Schism. So yeah, this card is definitely main deckable again. Problem with this though is I think Lancia is going to be very prevalent. This actually came up for me in the tournament. So if you think they're going to side in Lancia, you might want to side this out. Onto the extra deck. Just wanted to interrupt here quickly to mention that this is not my first time recording this video. I actually stayed up uh, late the night before recording it, uh, recording both this deck profile and a combo video, only to find out today when I went to edit that I recorded using the wrong microphone, so the audio sounded like trash. Just like always, this card can hit the pandemonium and your standby. So please, please leave a like, subscribe, comment, do all or just any of those things, uh, just to just so I don't feel like I wasted a huge amount of time. I, re I really appreciate it. First we have the Farragut, then the one Bearbrum. Um, I might want to run two Farragut, but so far one's been working. Double Shurig, of course, you need to. Double Dragon Lords, just to give you, just to make your boards, uh, just to give your weaker boards an extra interruption and just let and and to create some pressure off of two banishes alone. Uh, the Rugal and the Doom Eagle. Rugal is to give you some flexibility with revolts. Rugal is for hitting stuff like DP that I keep mentioning, Celestial, uh, good into Striker of course, good into uh, pretty good into Pranks. Uh, you can hit ten use against Sword Soul. Cards just good. Both of them help you to climb into access code. So this card, there is space for it now in this new build, and oh man, I, I'm so happy there is. This card can just close out games like crazy. Really important now that there might be more back row decks. Then we have the Appaloosa. You have to run it. You need you need to make a monster negate on your board. So this is our F zero replacement, and it is still Tri Brigade. This plus Revolt is still insane. El Mirage, of course. The one recital starling were allowed. The assembled nightingale. Zeus package. Maybe um, I've been considering cutting downer, but I think putting an extra effect, an extra activation on Zeus, is just just comes up so often and can just be so important so often. And then we are still running the ensemble robin. This card is still crazy. You you can't make it as often as before, but it's still absolutely broken. It's still four interruptions plus follow-up by itself. And this card, with Appaloosa, with a Revolt, uh, is just insane. Like, a lot of the boards last format, you didn't, you weren't making Dragon Lords. 
Uh, so you didn't really have anything if they just went to battle to try to attack over this. Almost all the boards now, you're going to have a revolt, so they can't just attack over this anymore. For the side deck, I am still running the Three Feather Storm. I considered cutting this for Judgment. It didn't come up in my tournament at all today, but uh, I, I think there is still enough ways to make it. Like, you are still running birds. Nerval lets you activate it. And even if you're only, even if you only get into tribes that aren't Nerval, you can still make this guy, <coughs> which lets you activate it. And it, it basically just says skip a turn. I don't know why Konami didn't ban this. Like, yeah, it's not what makes the deck good, but it's just a degenerate card. I wish they'd banned it on the last list. Then we have the back row hate. Red Reboot, Double Twin Twister, and the third copy of Cosmic Cyclone. I already talked about Cosmic Cyclone. Red Reboots for stuff like Eldritch, where you need, the, need to just get rid of all their things. Twin Twister is similar, but Twin Twister is also good for things like the Invoked matchup, where they might have Schism, plus uh, there can be only one. And also the aforementioned Prank Kids, with their Pandemonium and Skill Drain. So yeah, if, if uh, they set two... You definitely want to Twin Twister those on the standby. And then Cosmic versus Pranks, if they're setting to, you don't want to shotgun it on standby, you probably want to hold it for the Skill Drain, because if they activate Skill Drain, you just lose. Triple Lancia. This is because PK is the deck to beat, I think. And it's how it looks right now. And this card basically skips their turn. The other thing is, I think Sword Soul is going to be a lot more tenny focused now with uh, Protoss Band. And uh, this card puts in work there. You can also shut off Taya. And then if uh, you're playing Tribe Brigade Mirrors, like I did today, this, of course, is very good there, too. Triple Nibiru. This card, just like it always has been, is amazing into Sword Soul, and is amazing into Pranks and Phantom Knight. The only thing, it, like, so you may be thinking... But they have Omni Negates now. The Adventure Package, they can just negate Nibiru. Sure. That's if they actually get into the Adventure Package. <laughs> Meaning, if you don't Ash it or, or stop them by some other means, like having Ogre to negate their negate, or Imperm to negate their negate. Um, but yeah, even if, say they say you only have Nibiru in your hand, no other hand traps, if they don't get into Adventure Adventurer Package, you just nuke their whole board. It's it's kind of like the Sword Soul matchup. Like, yeah, if they go long run first and make the Baron, they can negate it. But if you have a negate for the Baron, you still nuke their board. If they don't have that specific hand where they can make the negate first, you still nuke their whole board. Card's good. Uh, the second copy of Crow uh, for, for Phantom Knights. And for stuff like, uh, like Sky Striker. And then the third copy of Droll. I already talked about why this card's good, but we can't main all three because of Sword Soul. Alright, that'll do it for today's video. If you're running this deck, please let me know how you're currently running it. I think there's so many ways that it could possibly be run this format. I'd be very interested to see. Uh, even if you're not running this deck, let me know what you think about this format. Make sure to check out this combo videos I mentioned uh, if you're curious on how to play this deck in this new format. Thanks.